So I recently took a walk around the block with my um, almost two-year-old and almost four-year-old grandchildren. And close to two hours later, we arrived home. <laughs> we looked at so many things that I would normally have never seen. I mean, the, and I've been talking about this. Like, I'm still amazed by the, the magic of a bee entering a flower. You know, you can, I mean, if you get down close, it's just amazing to watch the little wings, you know, and the pollen you can see on the stamens. And it's wonderful. And we examined rocks, trickling water, you know, the whole thing. Slowing down is so countercultural, isn't it? I mean, slowing down to that extent. And usually what it takes for us to do that is either, you know, access to a two-year-old, um, or the TDM of illness, or uh, the age of bones, you know, old, older bones. You start to slow down, and it gives you, you know, a different vision. It opens up the world in a new way. Martha was so busy. She was so cumbered. I love that King James Version word. Um, she was cumbered, distracted, uh, worried. Um, any one of us could be in her position. You know, somebody at 8 o'clock said, oh, you could just substitute my name there. <laughs> That's what life is for the most part for us, unless for some reason you are slowed down. Um, and, you know, and, uh, truth be told, slowing down has, you know, it's positives, which I just said, but it also has negatives as well, right? I mean, if you're slowed down um, because of illness or age, and, and frankly, a two-year-old can get boring as well. <laughs> Any one of us could be the Martha, Martha, of this story. You know, I do check my phone way, way, way more than I want to, but it's there, and it's somehow I do it. And I'm guessing I'm not the only one in this room. You know, and then you've got, you've got, you know, meals to cook, a paycheck to bring home, and, and you know, the the soccer game to go to, the be, be, baseball game, the, you know, the, the older parents to take care of. I mean, it's just layered on top of each other in all in one day. And so to find a time to really just breathe, um, it's not, it's not easy. And Jesus comes to Martha, and he, you know, Martha is so, Martha is a good friend of Jesus. They're really close friends. She is not always like this. She has hosted him uh, many, many, many times. Martha's home is where Jesus finds shelter and food and downtime and friendship. So she's not always worried and distracted, but for whatever reason, on this occasion, she pretty much just loses it with her busyness. And she comes to him and she, and she blames him. And then she blames her sister. And she complains, you know, well, I don't know about you, but when I get really stressed out, I am a lot of times apt to blame somebody else for my own self-induced misery. I'm likely to kind of lash out at someone else. Maybe I don't lash out outwardly, but inwardly I'm like, Arr. Martha lashes out, and, and Jesus calms her down, regrounds her, brings her back to herself when he just says her name so tenderly twice. You know, when somebody says your name twice in a loving way, Martha, Martha, you know, automatically, that just kind of regrounds you and pulls you back into yourself and helps you to remember, wait a minute, what is really important in this moment? What's really important here? In this circumstance, uh, Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. There's not going to be a whole lot more gatherings at Martha's home. This is one of the last ones. 
It's not the last one, but I mean, it's getting close to one of the last ones. This time with him is precious. It's irrepeatable. It's, a, it's precious time. And Martha and, and Mary, he says, Mary's chosen the better part. Well, what part has Mary chosen is the better part? She's chosen basically to be with him. Just to be with him. Now, does that mean that dinner's still? Yes, everyone's still going to get hungry. But you know what? There's such a thing as everyone pitching in, everyone helping out. There's such a thing as like a simple meal. And for whatever reason, Martha got tangled up with um, maybe wanting to put on a big production meal. I, I don't know. You know, we can't read our way back into that, but. The first time I hosted, now Martha had hosted many times, but the first time I hosted a family Thanksgiving dinner, I poured over cookbooks for days, you know, to find the perfect lentil nello <laughs> recipe. <laughs> uh, that dates me, doesn't it? <laughs> the perfect, you know, all the cranberry, different cranberry sauces that we would have, the various um, kinds of greens because, you know, straight beans and salad wasn't enough. Um, the five different pies we were going to have, the homemade rolls, and I did it. I, I did all of that with a new baby, you know. It, it's crazy to look back on, right? But I was wrapped up, number one, I was wrapped up honestly in my ego of wanting to, to show that I was a competent householder. I adored my mother in law. Um, idolized her, and you know, I wanted to show her that I could do this too. We ate very late. <laughs> <laughs> and afterwards, afterwards, she said to me, I think she even, you know, held my shoulder. She said, Honey, honey, we, we love you. <laughs> you know what's coming, right? <laughs> we love you. Um, that was wonderful. We ate things we'd never eaten before. <laughs> she said, we're, we're traditional people. You know, we're real basically traditional people. I learned not to mess with tradition, like turkey, yeah. stuffing, gravy, pumpkin pie. Good. <laughs> but she also taught me, she taught me, I think what Jesus is teaching Martha which is that it's relationship that's most important. That's what's most important. You know, not exotic meals or what, what the tangle of stuff that we get tangled up in. I think Jesus is pointing us, really pointing Martha and Mary and us to this question of what what do you most value in this moment? Because right, it's going to be different for different moments. There are moments when you want to put on this massive, whatever it is you're doing, event, and get all the details right. And that's really important. There are other times when just sitting by somebody's side, just being with them is what's most important. So this question, I leave this question with you to help you you know, as you go through your days, cumbered, distracted, maybe even worried, what is the most, what, what's the thing of most value right now? What has the most value? And then do that. Focus on that, and the other things will take care of themselves. What has the most value in this moment? And in that moment, and in all of our moments, really, the most valuable thing is to lift up our hearts and be in Jesus' presence. You know, that's the most valuable thing always, is to listen. To listen to Jesus. And of course, Jesus speaks to us through our lives, and through other people, and through creation. Um, but when we, when we listen, then we usually know, we usually know what is the right thing to do. Let us work on choosing 